This is Charles II of England. I've reconstructed his faces to show how he'd look in real life. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more historical recreations and let me know in the comments who you'd like to see in real life. Charles II was born in 1630. His father was King Charles I of England, Scotland, and Ireland, and his mother was sister to the French King Louis XIII. That made Charles II's mother the aunt to the future French King Louis XIV, and that also made Louis XIV first cousins to Charles II. Charles grew up in a really bad time in the 1600s. His father was fighting the English Civil War. This was a war between those who sought to keep an absolute monarchy called the Royalists and those who sought to make it a constitutional monarchy called the Roundheads. During this time, the young boy grew up accompanying his father into battle, but once things became too dangerous, Charles II went to France to stay with his mother who was already in exile. In a long story cut short, Charles's father, the king, lost and got his head chopped off. While Charles and his brother James were in France seeking refuge with their mother, England was taken control by Oliver Cromwell. He was a radical and while the roundheads who won were in favor of a constitutional monarchy, Oliver Cromwell managed to push his own agenda forward, similar to Robespierre during the French Revolution, which you can check out that video on my channel. And he made England into a republic. This was in 1653. Oliver Cromwell was a Puritan, and Puritans were radically conservative. To plainly put, the simplicity of the pilgrim image that we see today was promoted. Simple black clothing was worn, and theaters were closed, and they even banned Christmas. Extravagance was frowned upon. So for the next five years until 1658, Charles was homeless. He tried to get France's help, but they backstabbed him and allied with England's new republic. So Charles and his brother were expelled from France, and they went to Spain. There, he sought an alliance with Spain, and this led to a big war. It culminated with the Battle of Dune in 1658, which was part of the larger Anglo-Spanish War, which was in turn part of the even larger Franco-Spanish War. Then Oliver Cromwell suddenly died in 1658, and England was spent. They said, okay, that's enough, we're just gonna watch from the sidelines. Now that Cromwell was gone, England was divided into pro-Cromwell and anti-Cromwell factions. England said, okay, Charles, you can come back now. We need someone to be the intermediary so another civil war doesn't happen. But there's gonna be some changes, they said. The main change is that power will be in the parliament. You'll have some, but it won't be like what you had before. Do you accept or not? Charles said okay, as he was particularly lazy and preferred having fun rather than working. Perfect, they said, and he was crowned King Charles II in 1660. The Puritan movement started to dissolve and extravagance came back in fashion. After the Great Plague in 65 and Great Fire of London in 66, Charles kept clashing with Parliament. They had so many different opinions. For example, he wanted some religious tolerance. They said no, and then they wanted to remove his Catholic brother from succeeding him. This was really the tipping point. Parliament in England was very much run by Protestants. Protestants and Catholics did not like each other, so when Charles could not father an heir, the next in line would be his Catholic younger brother, James. James converted to Catholicism during his exile in France and was quite unpopular with the current Protestant government in England. Parliament tried to pass an exclusion bill, which would ban James from succeeding his brother. King Charles said no, and when they pushed harder, the king had only one option, 
but to dissolve parliament. A new parliament was formed twice, and each time they tried to pass the bill. This had Charles dissolved them both again. During the 1680s, the exclusion bill decreased in popularity and Charles continued ruling without parliament. This led him to rule as an absolute monarch for the remainder of his life. After an attempted assassination of him and his brother from some Protestant conspirators who were still upset about the bill, the monarchy gained sympathy and in turn its popularity rose. At 54, Charles II died in 1685 from an epileptic fit, possibly due to exposure to mercury during the many scientific experiments he performed throughout his life. Passing without an heir, his brother James became King James II of England and Ireland, and 7th in Scotland. He was the last Catholic monarch for the three countries. Fun fact, the roundheads that were for a constitutional monarchy evolved into the Whig party which evolved into the Liberals today. The Royalists evolved into the Tories which evolved into the Conservative Party today. Charles II may not have had any legitimate heirs, but he had many illegitimate children. As a result, Princess Diana was related to two of Charles's illegitimate children, which means that when Prince William takes the throne, he will likely be the first British monarch descended from Charles II.